Well, I'm hoping that this will spike a bit of interest in Australians thinking about our future, Tom, and realising that we're going to wake up one day uh, when the Queen either passes away or abdicates, and we're going to have either King uh, Charles or King William as our next head of state. And it won't be an Australian that'll be in that role, and Australians won't have had an uh, opportunity to have their say in who our next head of state is. And I think that the interview yesterday just highlights for people how irrelevant the royal family is becoming to the lives of the average Australian. And we should be starting to begin a serious conversation about moving to having one of our own as our head of state. Is the royal family racist? Um, look, I, I don't think that uh, they go out of their way to be racist. Um, uh, those allegations were made yesterday. They don't say who, who made the allegations. Um, I just think that in this day and age, uh, the average Australian would think, look, this, this family aren't really relevant to our lives anymore. They may have been uh, back at Federation in the God Save the Queen days, but they're certainly not in modern day Australia. We've got our own identity. We've got our own culture. Um, we govern ourselves. We make our own decisions. An Australian could certainly do this job. Why wouldn't we appoint someone as an Australian to be our head of state? Tim Wilson, your thoughts? Well, you know, uh, the Republican movement will always use any issue to um, justify their relevance. I think it's an issue that's, frankly, so far from the consciousness or priorities of Australians. Um, and I'm a constitutionalist. I'm quite relaxed about a modest form of change. Um, but when constituents talk to me at the moment, they're not talking to me about that. They're talking to me about things like rollouts and the health and safety of their community. And uh, there's always this kind of grasping hope uh, from the Republican movement, thinking it's somehow these events are going to spark uh, an interest amongst the public. I mean, the, the choice or the comparison um, between different models of governance in most recent years that Australians have seen has been the choice between President Trump, an elected president of a country, um, versus the alternative of the stability of the monarchy. Uh, and I suspect most people go, they see the shortcomings of the current model, but they also see it as more reliable, more stable, more predictable, and gives them a greater sense of confidence for the running of their country. Let's get into some of the other issues. JobKeeper is ending in three weeks, Tim Wilson. The various estimates out there on the jobs going um, do vary, but the CBA putting a figure on this, 110,000, is that just the price of um, readjusting to post-COVID? Is that an acceptable figure from your point of view? Well, I think everybody operates on the assumption that we want no Australian out of a job, um, but we also know that there's always going to be an adjustment from the support measures we're put in place because of COVID-19 uh, and what we need to do in a targeted and specific way to support sectors that are still facing challenges. And if we don't take action now to adjust from the JobKeeper wage subsidy to target specific measures, the number of people who will be affected by the adjustment will only increase as businesses operate on false foundations. So uh, it's how we support the people who need assistance, particularly in things like travel and tourism, where uh, international border closures continue to suppress um, you know, the resurgence of business uh, and job creation. There's not no plan beyond JobKeeper. We're starting to get it flashed, fleshed out, um, Matt, but it includes aviation grants, we're led to believe, some business loans, industry business loans, and also more apprentices. So there's plenty going on in this area. The problem with those, Tom, is I've been speaking to a lot of small businesses in the community that I represent. I've got Sydney Airport in my electorate. So aviation is a big employer, travel industry is a big employer, and many of those small businesses have been coming to see me and saying that, you know, they're, they're mortgaged uh, to the eyeballs. They may have, uh, they may have uh, used their house as their collateral. They can't take on any more debt. Um, and that's an issue for them if they're going to be talking about some form of government loan, uh, paying it back. And as one of them said to me a couple of weeks ago, why would you almost get us through the uh, difficulty of COVID and not get us through the other end by keeping JobKeeper in place? to ensure that there's support for those jobs until we get through this difficult period. And I think that that really uh, nails the issue. Why would you almost get the economy through when we know that we could target JobKeeper to those businesses that still continue to need it and make sure that we do get those businesses through, particularly those who are operating under restrictions because of government regulations in the travel sector, until they can up, be up and operating once again?